to reading Starnist, file here, and in this video I'm bringing you my latest build, the Mesmer's Legacy. I know many of you want to play with Mesmer's Spear, and you would probably want to augment it as much as possible. This is by no means a be-all and all build, but I think it's pretty solid, supplemented by some fire magic, and you'll find it very very interesting. It has to be noted that enemies in the DLC often have fire resistance, which is not true in the base game. So you can come into the DLC, grab the gear you need, and then go back to the lands between to wreak havoc on the opposition. Without further ado, let's get to it. So let us break the build down and see what makes it tick. Of course we're starting with the main weapon, the Spear of the Impaler. This is Mesmer's Spear and its unique skill is Mesmer's Assault. As you saw in the opening clip, landing this thing deals a shit load of damage but comes at a risk. You can get knocked out of the animation, stopping the second and third subsequent attacks if you haven't staggered the enemy or if you get hit by something heavy. The ideal scenario is to employ jump attacks until you can knock the enemy down in a vulnerable state and then move in with the Spear of the Impaler. To improve the damage output of said prone enemies, I will be explaining our talismans in use in just a sec. For our incantations we will be using the Fire Knight Seal plus 25, it states enhances fire incantations of Mesma and we will be using at least Two of those, the most important ones in my humble opinion, so having this is certainly helping us. If you would like to use different incantations, you can just go ahead, it's up to personal preference I suppose, but Mesmer's Orb is a very unique ability dealing a shit load of stagger damage, so I would highly recommend you go after it and of course invest the points so you can use it properly. This build will be relying on parrying to a certain extent, but if you don't want to go into the trouble of parrying, you can always just block or double hand the spear and go in raw. I'm using the Sacred Rift Shield plus 25 with Golden Parry because it has the best frames for parrying and it also adds some defenses against madness passively. Again, the buckler will do, but please just go for a small shield, they're by far the best choice when it comes to parrying, and pair it with either golden parry or carrion retaliation for the best results. What makes this whole thing so unique is the winged serpent helm. You get this helm by fighting the commander right on the opposite side of Mesmer's entrance. It's kind of a unique looking fire knight, much stronger, and this drops when you defeat him. Enhances Fire Knight skills and it also buffs Mesmer's Assault which is pretty nuts because it increases the damage that you deal with the amazing Mesmer's Assault ability. It is 100% the best choice for a build like this. Trust me, you can also check the numbers yourself. But I 100% it enhances Mesmer's Assault. I have tested it extensively. Now for the armor, it is up to personal preference according to your level, your overall endurance. What I'm trying to do here, since I won't be using any damage reduction talismans, is go for a hefty piece of armor so I can get my negation as high as possible. My scatry blessing right now is 18, so in the lands of shadow you can look at something like 65% on average reduction here on the right, but again, According to your endurance level and your overall level, you might want to mix this up so you can carry what we need, which is the weapons and of course the helmet. For our talismans, I go with Erdtree's Favor plus 2, self-explanatory, more HP, more stamina, higher equip load. We need the equip load and this is an overall super versatile talisman because it allows you to focus on other things. Call me traditional, but I'm going with this thing 100% on pretty much all of my builds. Second is the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. If you don't have this, you can go for the Winged Sword Insignia. If you don't have that, you can go for Millicent's Prosthetic that also gives you 5 Dexterity if you want to save those 5 levels to put them into something else. All 3 are viable choices. This has the best on consecutive attack, increase to your damage, the prosthesis comes second but gives you plus 5 dexterity and the simple winged sword insignia gives you lower boosts but it's much easier to attain by just clearing a dungeon. That is up to you but we want one of the talismans that gives you a lot of damage on successive attacks because Mesmer's Assault Phase 2 jabs multiple times 
building the buff really, really easily. For solid crits, we have the dagger talisman, pretty self-explanatory. This spear is considered a heavy spear, so jump attacks with it will build a lot of poise damage, leading to an opening for a crit. Very good idea to take advantage of those crits, and because this is a piercing weapon, it deals very solid crits indeed. Supplementing this, we have the Spear Talisman, enhances counterattacks unique to thrusting weapons. It is a huge debate. What is a counterattack? Counterattacks come in two flavors. They are damage instances where the enemy is initiating an animation like a roll or an attack, and you counterattack them at that instance, and if your timing is good, you get extra damage. It's pretty much free damage if the enemy tries to do anything and you interrupt them. Second instance of that is when the enemy is open to a crit. So if you jab them a couple of times before initiating the critical attack, you will get a lot of extra damage. You know what's even better? If the enemy is down and staggered, and instead of going for a simple crit, you initiate Mesmer's Assault, including the second phase, that is the multi-jab attack. They are defenseless, you're jabbing their guts for increased counter damage, and you're also building the buff for consecutive landed attacks. Insane damage output, as you saw in the opening clip, and of course, it is a very simple alternative to just jabbing them once for a crit, unload that barrage of attacks and watch their health bar melt whilst you are relentlessly assaulting them with the boss's insane weapon. If you can place a ranged weapon in this configuration without going above medium roll, I recommend Ansbach's longbow which is crazy. The weapon art is quite unique. It states that this skill uses the ball head horizontally, readies 8 arrows at once, firing them in a fan-shaped arc. You know what's that great for instead of just dealing damage? Put on some rot or poison arrows, getting close, make sure as many as possible hit, and you have an insta proc of the debilitating effect so they can take damage over time. Insane value out of this bow, and I think people will start implementing usage of it in their build because it is crazy. So the whole idea with this build is to deal high physical and fire damage, this build will benefit you more in the main game where a lot of enemies are prone to fire damage and finish them off when they are staggered by using Mesmer's Assault when it's actually safe to use it. We're also using his spells, especially his orb, it requires 60 faith, so 60 faith is something you should 100% go after because it deals high damage in a good area of effect and very high stagger. I've tested it and it was surprisingly effective. The damage is not that great if you don't focus your build 100% on casting incantations, but this is pretty much a brawler build, so our first priority should be to make the weapons as powerful as possible and use incantations as a supplement to strengthen our position even more. It's a thrusting weapon with good range, kinda slow, but if you can parry and position yourself correctly, you'll get great results out of it. So, this is it Tarnished, my Mesmer's Legacy build. I hope you found it useful. I also made another build you can check right here, including the aspect of the Crucible Wings. Subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more content like this. And until next time, be well, stay frosty, and always try for perfection. Cheers!